Mr. Speaker, we now learn there are about 40 Liberal MPs that believe that this NDP Liberal Prime Minister is not worth the cost, crime and corruption. But there's this strange rule in the Liberal caucus that you need to have permission from the Prime Minister to speak at the microphone. So a Liberal MP wanted to get up and say quadrupling the carbon tax is a bad idea or doubling housing costs is making people homeless. They can't do it. Will the Prime Minister lift the gag so his Liberal MPs can say to his face that he's not worth the crime, the cost and the corruption? I told you guys, I told you he was going to roast him for this. Get fired, Once again, Step in English, down, man. Uh, None of these questions have to deal with the administration of government. Yes, but I it see does. The, what are you talking about? He's the Prime the, Minister, Greg. Shut up. What do you mean this doesn't have to order. deal with the administration? He's the leader of the party. I see that the Prime Minister is rising to his feet. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it seems that the Conservative leader is conf confusing rules of the apply within his Conservative yeah. caucus uh, to rules that we have in the Liberal Party. So the reality is, Mr. Speaker, we see at which point the Conservative leader is simply focused on playing politics and gaining power. Uh, that's why uh, he wants to talk about things uh, that are uh, not having to do with delivering for Canadians. He doesn't want to talk about the fact that close to a million Canadians uh, will be receiving dental care because of our Canadian dental program that he says doesn't even exist and that he's voted against every step of the way. May I ask the honourable member from uh, Battle River Crowfoot uh, to please uh, not take not take the microphone when uh, when the speaker is up on his feet or when uh, other speakers who have been recognised by the speaker is taking the floor. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I'm sorry to have to bring up this terrible rule. It's just that Liberal backbench MPs are coming and talking to all of yeah. us to say that they're not allowed to speak to him. And they're wondering if I could perhaps pose some questions on their behalf. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I guess they can't get anywhere with the current Prime Minister, so they'd rather talk to the future common sense Conservative. Yeah. Instead of silencing his own MPs, will he let them get up to the mic tomorrow to tell him that he's not worth the cost, crime, and corruption? You tell him here. You tell him here, 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 here. The honourable leader of the opposition. Did Trudeau leave? Did he just leave? Mr. Speaker, the reality is he can't administer the government because he's too busy fighting for his job after nine years, even if his MPs know it. He broke immigration, he doubled the debt, doubled housing costs, doubled crime, doubled the cost of living in a home. He wants to quadruple the carbon tax that's already forced two million people to a food bank, one in four kids to hunger, 25% of Canadians to poverty, Canadian food prices up 36% faster than in the States, stats can says we have the biggest gap between rich and poor in our recorded history. His MPs know that he's broke the country. Will he call a carbon tax election so we can fix it? Oh, no, he's here. Okay. He, he didn't leave. He's still here. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker. The Leader of the Opposition, like all, all of us in this House, know that Canadians are facing challenging times. His solution, however, uh, is to offer them cuts, is to offer them no programs that they can rely on, and to vote against things like dental care and pharmacare and investments in a green economy that is going to create jobs and careers long into the future. He wants to harm Canadians where we're focusing on delivering for them. He wants cuts to programs and services while we're busy investing in Canadians and their futures. That's the choice Canadians get to make. The Honourable Member for Belleau Chambly. Mr. Speaker, time is moving on. Four million retirees in Canada, one million retirees in it. Quebec You're not are waiting for an improvement of their purchasing power. In a real way, and not through slogans, thousands of supply-managed farmers and producers are waiting for their system to be protected. Will the Prime Minister seize the opportunity to do something useful and improve the lives of 4 million retirees, 1 million retirees in Quebec, and tens of thousands of farmers and producers? 
the bloc keeps threatening an election the right in a week honorable prime if minister they don't get their old age security thing passed like my honorable colleague I don't think they will do it. well we will always defend supply management we will always protect our farmers and producers from coast to coast to coast with regards to seniors he says that he wants to act well we've acted when we reduced retirement from 67 as the conservatives wanted to 65 unfortunately the bloc voted against we also acted when we delivered an increase in 10% in the guaranteed income supplement the bloc voted against there's a dental care program that delivered for close to 1 million canadians they voted against the honorable member for belleau chambly the prime minister is manipulating the facts but acting is something he'll have to do in a few days in a paralyzed parliament like this one, with a paralyzed government like this one, we have made a proposal that will help people. A proposal that could stabilize parliament for another few weeks. He'd need it. Will he allow his party to be eaten from within and without, or will he change things for the better for millions of people? The right honorable prime minister I've said many times, Mr. Speaker, I completely agree with the desire to be here for seniors who need our help. And that is the reason for which our government has enacted a number of measures in the past years to invest in seniors, to be here for our seniors. And we are open to working with people in this house in order to deliver even more for seniors. The Honourable Member for Rosemont La Petite Patrie. Mr. Speaker. Poverty and insecurity are affecting more and more people. According to one study, every month, 40% of Quebecers are a mere $200 away from bankruptcy. $200, Mr. Speaker. The situation is so serious that the expression tightening our belts is becoming too real. 20% of people are eating less just to save a bit of money. It makes no sense. It's a result of the Liberals' weakness in forcing CEOs of big grocery stores to do the right thing. When will the Liberals stand up, grow a spine, and force these companies to control the prices of essential foods? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, the NDP knows full well that we have enacted measures to improve competitivity between uh, groceries. We have delivered direct aid to families who needed it, and we're also delivering a program for food in schools that is saving hundreds for families from coast to coast to coast. We will continue to be here to support Canadians. We will continue to be here to invest in programs that will help Canadians whilst the Conservatives are just threatening austerity and cuts. Perfect.